Yo, welcome to Scrum Matchups YouTube. Today, I'm going to go over my perceived metagame for the European International Championships. I am recording this on 4.12, which is also the day it's going to come out. So, I don't know, maybe some weird online tournament thing or something is going to happen that's going to change this. But unlikely, because we are only a couple of days away from the tournament happening if you are new here you just clicked on it normally i do these for north american tournaments usually pretty accurate never quite a hundred percent accurate probably never but it's close enough and then this is how i like to think of the game when i am deciding what to tech and what deck to pick is what are the odds I actually hit a deck and how many of the decks will I hit? Okay, you can take an auto loss and sometimes you can take an auto loss to something that's even kind of popular if you're taking good matchups to the other popular stuff. So with the new tournament, we have Japanese results and online results. And of course, some testing and talking to other people that is gonna go into this. You might think a little differently and let me know in the comment section below if you do. But I think the most common deck you're going to play against is an aggro lost box that is not necessarily the turbo version that I posted this channel a couple days ago. It could also be the Sky Seal Stone variant, but I think this, if you lump these two together, it will be the most popular. The Radiant Greninja Lost Zone variants, not evolving, you know, not Giratina, not Gudra, nothing like that, but you have the probably Raikou in there. And you probably have the Drapion, of course, because Mew exists and that kind of stuff. I am a fan of the Forest Seal Stone version, but I do believe if you lump these two together and most decks play against them in the same manner. So I think lumping them together is fine. I think these are going to be the most common. I would expect to play probably against about two of them in day one. Now, of course, variants exist, right? Some of you will play against nine of them. Some of you will play against zero of them. But on average, in you know, if you go to enough tournaments, average is going to take over for the random variants. On average, I would expect to play against about two of them, so I would be ready for this matchup for sure. I think the next most common deck is going to be Mew VMAX. Now, I am going to lump DTE and Fusion Strike together, and I think the further we get into this, the more I'm thinking Double Turbo is just better. It's looking better through the online results, Japanese results, you know, DTE started to kind of take over a bit for Fusion Strike. And this is exactly what happened in the Silver Tempest format as well. It was like, oh, yo, Fusion Mew's good. And then suddenly, mm, actually, Double Turbo is probably still good. And the fact is, Judge is a very good card. And because Judge is such a good card, I'm leaning more towards Double Turbo being the better and the more popular, but I would also be ready for Meloetta's as well. So, you know, you're sitting down your opponent, especially in those early rounds or maybe the middle tables, your bench, your start your Lugia. Maybe you want to try getting a second Lugia down or you start your Arceus. Maybe you want to get a second Arceus down, you know, something like that. Whatever your deck needs something to function, just be prepared to get the donk. And then games two and three, you'll know. But game one, you don't want to give them a free game. If you give Mew a free game in a best of three, that's really bad. You don't want to just automatically give it to them. But I expect about one or two Mews. I think Double Turbo is going to be more popular, but I'm not like super solid on that. Lugia. Yeah, that's right. It's back, baby. Uh, if you listen to the last podcast episode, which you should. We gushed about how good Lugia is. It's doing well at online tournaments. If you've watched Omnipoke, uh, he took the results from uh, Japan and Thailand and etc. and put them with CP. And he took the online results and put them with CP. And Lugia came out on top. Spoiler alert to the video. But uh, it's pretty good. You should check that out. If you don't believe in Lugia, you should. Single Strike Lugia, Tyranitar, Stone Jorner, sometimes Single Strike Eveltal as well is a top tier deck. I don't expect as much of it currently because I think a lot of people still don't think it's quite up to how good it is, even though it is doing well online. I think the more tuned in you are, the more you realize this. And there will be people at EUIC who aren't that tuned in because this is like the last week we've really started to realize like yo Lugia is like really good still so I'm expecting one to two but I'm success expecting a fair amount of success from the Lugia Archeops so I would definitely be prepared for it and this is one where the list that I would play BT dubs at the end of the video I'm gonna show you the list that I would be playing if I could go I can't go but the list I'm playing takes a sketchy Lugia matchup, which is very unfortunate because it's going to be a very popular deck. I would be ready for it. I would know what to do. Don't lose to Tyranitar milling you out, all that other good stuff. 
Next one, Gardevoir. I have playing probably about one of them on average, but the closer we get, the better Gardevoir is looking. And I know someone listening to this wants or has their Gardevoir sleeved up and is ready to go. I'm going to tell you right now, I think if you feel confident with Gardevoir, it is a good play. Now, I did say the most common deck I'm expecting would be the Greninja variant of Lost Box, which is a lot of pressure to apply between Sableyes, and now you have to spend a bench spot on your mana fee. You can get a bit sketchy, right? But otherwise, Gardevoir just takes good matchups into pretty much everything else. I have the Mewtwo V Union here. I would expect a fair amount of them to play a Mewtwo V Union. This is something that has been coming up in a lot of the online tournaments. I would expect most to not have it, but I would not be shocked if I were you if your opponent pulls out a Mewtwo V Union, especially Lost Box. Be ready to play around the play the V Union, Roxanne you, 16 damage counters to KO2 Comfies. That is one of the best strategies for Gardevoir to beat Lost Box. Do I think they need it? No, because you can probably take the L of the Lost Box and be fine if you're beating literally everything else. But that is a valid strategy. Lost Box players be prepared. Every other player be prepared. Mewtwo V Union is a good card in a deck that can afford to play it. But I'd expect to play probably about one of them for sure. Next one down is Maridon. I know we have insulted Maridon a ton, but the fact is the deck is very fast and fast is good. Deck is fast. It's new. I think we're going to go in about the same way Japan went, which was, you know, we're at the start. The new shiny fast aggro deck is going to see a fair amount of play, and then it's going to fall off a bit and then pop up, you know, here or there. It did win the last Japanese, uh, not regional, but the last Japanese championship. I'd expect this to look a lot more like that one than the other ones. I do think the Magnezone technology is necessary for the meta, the ability to pull up a Comfy or a Manaphy and KO it with Magnezone V, and then use the V star to take two prizes, lets you uptrade in a way that normally ride on can can't. And the fact that Maradon can't uptrade with these two prizers into single prize loss zone decks or, you know, Muse just able to do Mew stuff is usually why Maradon struggles. So I think the Magna Zone's pretty darn good. I would expect Maradon to show up. I would not be hard teching for it personally. Like, I'm not going to have a Zapdos in my loss box list that I would bring. But I do think that Maridon is a deck that you're going to see for sure. I would be prepped for it. Some people will be playing Klefki as well, so they can Regilecki V, hit and run into the Klefki. I don't expect most people will. I think a lot of people have kind of decided that that is not the best strategy for Maridon. You're more likely to run into like a Flying Pikachu, for example, or a Luxray. You know, you go Judge, Luxray, discard the Colrus you got judged into, you're go. Oh yeah, and the Luxray can KO you with the Regilecki V Max, powering it up, right? So that is the strategy I would expect. You could also see Turbo as well, where you're just kind of like, I'm just going to hit you with these V and EX basics every single turn, and you have to keep up. And that is another, I think, good strategy. There's a world where Regilecki is not even the most successful version of Maridon, and it's got something else in it. I'm a fan of Flaffy if Sableye didn't exist. If Sableye didn't exist then Murata would be such a better deck. <laughs> it like, wouldn't even be close. Murata would be such a better deck. But the fact that Sableye exists means you can't really play Flaffy. The fact that Zapdos plus Sky Seal Stone can take four prizes on your Regilecki VMAX is bad. But Maridon, I think, is definitely a deck that's going to show up in numbers. Be ready for it. Law Zone Tina. This is one Tord put it out there in S tier. If you didn't see Tord's tier list, check out his Twitter. But he put out Law Zone Giratina and Lugia as the two S tier decks. I still don't think it's going to be quite as popular. Kind of like what I was talking about with Maridon is true for Law Zone Giratina as well, where you're just, I'm going to go fast and hit you hard. The problem is there's not a lot of decks currently where the Tina is that good. With that said, they do exist and they will be there. And Lasso Giratina is a good deck for sure. And people will play it just like Maridon. It can hit you really hard, really fast. Difference between this one is you can also go the single prize route. Right? You got the Cramorants and the Sableyes. You can add a Tropius as well because you play Grass Energy. The Tropius with Rally Back lets you KOA Tyranitar V for the Lugia matchup, you know. 
It's a big fan. I just think Tropius is a cool Pokemon. It's so silly. It's got bananas on its chin. But anyway, Lasso Giratina, uh, kind of like I said, I think it struggles currently from the same thing that Maridon struggles with, which is very simply, yeah, you hit really hard. You can hit hard fairly fast, but there's just a lot of situations where it's not that important to hit hard with a multi prizer that you have to spend all these resources on. In this case, you have to spend the resources finding the evolution and then you're loss zoning the energy and you know, you have to mirage gate and all this other stuff. So I think Tina is very good. If you want to bring Tina, I'm not against it. I don't think I'd be the least bit shocked to see Tina in top eight, but I do think there are issues with Giratina and one of them is just the popularity of the single prize Lost Zone variants. Now you could add a Halucha to your Lost Zone Giratina and that would help you a lot in that matchup as well. Currently, you know, you're not playing Halucha, you add that in, you're able to Halucha to Comfies or Comfy and a Manaphy, Sableye KO both of them and suddenly, yeah, you have these extra Giratinas you don't need, but it's that extra little bit. So that's something to consider, I think, if you're gonna play Lost Zone Giratina. Necessary? No. Not at all, but I think it's cool. Arctina. Uh, I would not expect a ton of these, but I would be prepared. They are another judge deck. I think it is a worse judge deck than DTE Mew is. And because of that, I wouldn't be playing it. But it's kind of the, hey, I'm just going to bench these gigantic things and say, what do you got? And what's interesting is I don't love Lost Zone Giratina because the Giratina is just kind of a liability, but I do kind of like Arctina because they're going to make you go through these thick Pokemon. Here's an Arceus, here's a Giratina, and then depending, here's another Arceus or a Giratina. Yeah, there's a B barrel on the bench, but whatever, right? Who cares about that B barrel? I think it's a pretty solid deck, actually. This is definitely one of those decks, too, where player skill takes a bit of a back seat and you're very simply doing the Arceus thing. And I think that is also incredibly valuable. And one of the reasons I think it will show up possibly in even higher numbers than this is if you're a player coming from a different country kind of last minute, I do think Arctina is a deck that you will pilot very well while jet lagged and the power level is pretty darn high and so i do think i would expect to hit them for sure and i would be prepared it's not an easy matchup for most decks to get judged and path and then smacked in the face that is very scary for a lot of decks even the ones like a single prize loss zone where you're like yo i up trade into these things by smacking them i can sky seal stone them and you're like yeah but i'm gonna judge you and path you every single turn while taking a knockout do you always have a response that's hard that is very hard to always have a response the goo this is another one kind of like archaea not arceus uh lugia taking a massive step up in popularity the lost goo uh it got top four in south korea they're like quote-unquote regional equivalent and it's been doing well online i think the goo is pretty good i don't think I would bring Gujar if I were going to EUIC, but I would strongly consider it and I would have tested it more. It's felt pretty good overall. I think the big problem is, I said not expecting a lot of loss on Giratina, but that's essentially just an auto loss. They just go rope boss and you lose. Uh, Mew is another one that it's not quite an auto loss, but it's pretty darn close, even with the Drapion and the Lost Goo, because they go rope and then boss and then they KO you while they lost zone your Drapion and they judge you every turn and that's kind of bad right so lost goo I think it is a very good deck I just awkwardly positioned right now and you know the double escape rope play from single prize lost zone or the sky seal stone variant can go escape rope boss KO you with the Dragonite because they put a couple pings on you and it's really awkward if they like Sableye they put oh, I'm gonna put two on your Gudra V star and then I'm gonna spread the other 10 elsewhere take some prizes set up some math for future multi prize turns right and then suddenly you're like well I have to moisture star these two damage counters because otherwise they can take three prizes with the Dragonite and then you know things can just get awkward and then they just smack you in the face incredibly hard and you've already used your moisture star on two damage counters and so i think loss of gudra is one that once you hit the like people who know what they're doing it gets a lot harder for the deck but also 
just like Lasso and Giratina, I don't think I'd be shocked to see some goo in top eight. It is a deck that if you hit the right matchups, you draw fairly well, maybe you have a slightly better list than the ones that we've seen, you can do super well. So I think Gujar is one to be prepared for, for sure. And if you don't know how your deck plays into Lasso and Gujar, you will lose. Like that is... That is very important. You are the one who has to answer the goo. The goo doesn't have to answer you. The goo is going to rolling iron in your face and say, do you have a response? And if you don't, you lose. So I would be prepared. Are you likely to hit one? Not necessarily, but don't be surprised if your opponent turn one battle VIP passes for two Hisui and Gudra Vs. Like you need to know what you're doing in that one. Lost Zard, Sable Zard, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I wouldn't expect to hit a ton of them, but they will be around for sure. Very straightforward, very good in the mirror because we're expecting a lot of mirrors. We're expecting a lot of Mew. It takes a good Mew matchup when you got the Drapion in there as well because you got the Drapion, you got the Zard KO, and then I don't know, figure out how to get that other KO, right? Because they're probably going to loss on your Drapion and loss on your Zard. <laughs> if they're uh, hitting the right stuff, right? But if they don't loss on either of those, you do just win the game, and that's super cool. So loss on Charizard, I would expect it to be around. It takes some pretty solid matchups overall, but I don't think it's quite powerful enough. I hope I'm proven wrong. If Sablezard does turn out to be the best performing deck, that would be cool, but I would not be the most scared of it going into this weekend. Random stuff. Yeah, I'm expecting uh, closer to one, actually, for this one. The random stuff. These are just some of the quote unquote random stuffs that I thought of. You can hit many other things. Um, Urshfu and Teleon. I know there's believers watching this. I wouldn't expect to hit them. I think most people are starting to realize it's not that good of a deck. Uh, I would know how to play against it, especially if you are a Lost Zone deck or a Guardi deck. Just know if you have something that get yoga looped very easily, just know the matchup. Maybe you've played it once or twice and be like, oh, this is what I have to do here, right? If you're Lost Zone, you really want to save your switch carts for your mana fees. You want to get all the damage off ASAP. You know, your boss is incredibly important. So you can boss K with Raikou. If you're playing the Sky Seal Stone variant, you take four praises on an Inteleon VMAX. You do kind of just win the game. And that's super sick right there. But you do have to build towards that play and take two prizes elsewhere, probably on like an Octillery and something like that. Anyway, other decks, Hisuian Zorak V-Star, this thing always pops up. It's always there. It's always around. You hear people say ticking curse all the time. It's going to show up in some sort of numbers. I think Shadow Rider is actually a viable deck. You have the multiple clef keys. You can hit and run Hatterene V into the clef keys, which I think is the best use of clef key right now. I think that's better than the uh, Regilecki into it, just because you have so many other options and you're hitting so much harder with less setup. And so I'm a big fan of that because you already have Fog Crystal and things like that. Um, Ride on. I think you just go with the lightning stuff, right? But this one, you go and go with the psychic stuff. Hatterene and Klefki are both psychic. I think it's pretty good uh, against Lugia. You can go for Seal Stone, grab a Path of the Peak, and then you go Shadow Mist plus Path of the Peak, and then you auto win Lugia that doesn't play a Pump Gaboo, and a lot of them are currently not playing a Pump Gaboo for very obvious reasons. I don't think I would play a Pump Gaboo to maybe hit a Shadow Rider, but that's definitely a deck that might hit. Palkia, I think Palkia is still good. Palkia still is very hard. Uh, you don't have Inteleon anymore, but you still have B-Barrel and stuff like that. Uh, you're very thick. You're a large lad, and because of that, I think you're in a good spot into a lot of other decks because you hit hard, you have a lot of HP, you have Empoleon, which you could play into Lasso and stuff if you wanted to. I've tried it. I don't love the Empoleon, but I will say it does make the matchup better when you hit it. And Block Lax Control is a deck that we've seen out of Japan. Uh, see a fair amount of success. I don't think I'd be the least bit shocked if your opponent flips over a Block Lax. Just be prepared to play around it to the best of your ability if you do hit hit them, don't bench things you don't have to, is one of the benefits of Giratina is a deck like Block Lax. If you start the Giratina, you literally just win the game. You just sit there and go shred, 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 and in six turns, you've won the game because there's not really anything they can do. You play a ton of switching cards and all that other good stuff. Oh, the decks that I would expect, like I said, I also kind of gave my opinion on each one, but Aggro Lost Box, Mew, Lugia, 
Gardevoir, and Maridon. Oh, and Lost Teen, I guess, are the decks I would be the most prepared for, for sure. You could take an auto loss to one of these. I would not take an auto loss to more than one. I think they are all powerful decks, for sure. They're all decks that can hit you very hard, very fast, very consistently. So be prepped. And then the other stuff that you should be aware of, the other stuff that maybe you should test against it, have an answer in your brain, have a game plan, but maybe don't tech against this stuff. This stuff, yeah, techs aren't terrible, right? But this stuff, eh, not necessarily. Here's a 60 I would play if I could go. I tweeted this out the other day, twitter.com slash mellow underscore magikarp. It's in the description box. Be sure to follow me on there. Uh, I'm just a big fan of Lawson. This is an updated version of the list that I played to the 1K the other day. Uh, if you want to know, the Pidget is a flex spot for sure. You can play literally anything. I'm a big fan of Pidget into Mirror because you don't have to bench a V, but you can use Forest Sealstone. Using Forest Sealstone is why I think this is the best version into the Mirror match. The boss was added purely for the Lugia matchup. You do have to be able to at some point boss the Lugia or boss the fish what's the fish thing called luminion at some point to take two prizes so boss becomes incredibly important for that matchup specifically other matchups yeah it's not that important right because you got so much other stuff but deck is very fast hits hard spreads damage counters what more do you really need uh, honestly, I don't know what more you really need. I'm a big fan of this deck. I think this deck is incredibly good, incredibly well positioned. And yeah, anyway, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all the other YouTube stuff, and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out.